Trump's pick for Attorney General Matt Gates puts Adam Schiff back in his place and exposes him for the fraud that he is in front of the entire Congress. You guys are not going to want to miss this. It was not agreed to. Who seeks recognition? The gentleman from California uh, seeks recognition. Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The reserve clerk will report the amendment. Reserve a point of order. The point of order is reserved. Mr. McClintock. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. McClintock offered by Without Mr. objection, Schiff. the amendment will be considered as read, and the gentleman is recognized to explain his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this amendment is simple. It would exempt individuals fleeing communist and totalitarian regimes from Section 104. Uh, we should exempt people fleeing communist and totalitarian dictatorships from this legislation and allow them to apply for asylum as our laws were intended. The underlying bill would bar individuals who cross the border between ports of entry from seeking asylum. This means individuals would be forced to wait in Mexico to cross the border and be processed. That would make people fleeing communist and totalitarian regimes uh, sitting ducks for the cartels for exploitation, abuse, kidnapping, or murder. Uh, we have seen what happens when people are forced to wait in Mexico for too long. Under the Remain in Mexico program, there were over 1,500 publicly reported cases of murder, rape, torture, kidnapping, and other violent assaults against migrants returned under the Remain in Mexico program. In fact, just last month, we saw what happens when vulnerable migrants are put at risk, when migrants in an immigration center in Ciudad Juarez were left to be burned alive. This is not the fate we want for anyone, and we don't want people fleeing totalitarian dictatorships like people fleeing Venezuela or Cuba or Nicaragua or Russia or China or Vietnam or elsewhere to have to face those kind of dangers. There was a time when my colleagues on the other side of the aisle claimed to oppose communism and totalitarian dictatorships and welcomed people fleeing those horrible regimes. The underlying bill suggests otherwise. Uh, I urge my colleagues to join in this amendment so that those fleeing asylum are not put at additional, those fleeing uh, persecution by these communist regimes are not put at additional risk um, by having to wait for long periods of time uh, in dangerous places before they can lawfully uh, apply for asylum. Will and the gentleman the, yield for a question? Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll yield will, back. Will you yield for the clarifying question? Um, you can seek your own recognition. I'm going to yield back to the chair. The gentleman yields back. Does the gentleman seek recognition? I, 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 I guess so. Is, the point of order is withdrawn, and Mr. Gates is recognized. Thank you. I yield to the sponsor. If the sponsor would be willing to engage in a colloquy with me, uh, would you consider the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to be a totalitarian dictatorship? Uh, Mr. Gates, I, I give the same answer that Representative Lofgren gave before. These are not new terms of art. These are the terms used in current law. Uh, and so we are merely applying current law to protect people, uh, and in particular, in this case, those that are fleeing communist dictatorships. Um, if the gentleman, uh, his objection is that this definition is overbroad. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 Will you support it? Well, again, Mr. Schiff, I'm just trying to understand I what your amendment says. I guess your answer is no, then, Mr. Gates. Well, that you perhaps assume too much, my then friend. your answer because is yes. You, 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 I'm asking what you mean by totalitarian dictatorship and just whether the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia would qualify. It's just a yes or no question. Well, I, I, I certainly I mean, think— Forgive me I, for not no, knowing I'm, the I'm, list I'm, that Ms. Would, you, would you like an answer, Mr. Gates? I, I, uh, I certainly consider— uh, Saudi Arabia to be a dictatorship. Yes, I do. A totalitarian uh, one? Um, but, uh, well, uh, Mr. Gates, my question is, if your problem with this amendment is you yeah, think it's Mr. overbroad... Mr. Schiff, I'm not stating a problem with well, the amendment. Well, but, I am merely well, asking you my, what it my means. My question then, Mr. Gates, is will What is the difference it? between a dictatorship my, my, and a totalitarian question, dictatorship? My question... Since Saudi Arabia is well, there, a dictatorship... There is a difference between totalitarianism and dictatorship. Well, sure, I'm asking you to explain but, the but differences Gates, of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. That's really the, the question, Mr. Gates. Why can't you unless, just answer whether or not your amendment unless, would apply Mr. to Unless, Mr. Gates, this is just a rhetorical exercise. It's a serious effort to understand whether or not your amendment applies to If your question is sincere, which I know assumes too much, but if it is, it is. then will you support the amendment confined to communist dictatorships? Yes or no, Mr. Gates? 
I'm probably not going to support the amendment either way. That doesn't well, there matter. you go. I don't, I there don't want to know what well, it then, means. Then what about all the rhetoric you, you constantly espouse about standing up to communism? Here you're saying someone fleeing communism, if they're interdicted between ports, uh, then, then they will not qualify. It right, doesn't matter what kind there of There is regime. a mechanism by which one seeks asylum for those very reasons, and it's not showing up and creating an entire loophole So this whole thing about Saudi system. Arabia is just a red herring, right? I'm There's just it's... curious to know whether or not you consider well, I, I, them qualifying under the bill. Your and curiosity, I have, but I, I, would, have I would appreciate consistency. I have earned two and a half minutes. Consistency. You know, Mr. Schiff, people on the border don't get to have a debate the like this. Like you know, it's I not your time, Mr. Schiff. I'm reclaiming my time. If you would stand up to Mr. Gates has the time. Mr. Gates has the time. you do. Mr. Gates has the time it's amazing because i have never seen somebody who looks and acts more like a weasel than adam schiff he did everything he could but answer the question from matt gates and let's just be honest we all know why adam schiff is supporting this bill he wants all these people to flood into our country not know who is who matter of fact if we had it schiff's way he would probably disavow the southern border wall in its entirety and just flood our borders with undocumented people. And I'm sure not all those people are going to be upstanding citizens if statistics hold true to what it is today. Because ever since we've been allowing people to walk through our border willy-nilly, the crime in this country has exponentially risen. So although Schiff is playing the card like he's a good humanitarian person, this bill will pass as a Trojan horse to destroy America from within and get to have this joyful little colloquy with you. A border patrol agent has to look at someone and assess whether or not they're going to let them in or not. And I'm just for clarity, even though I'm not gonna support your amendment, I'm going to support the bill in the unlikely event that your amendment were to be adopted. I simply want to know if someone encounters someone from the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, whether or not the exception that your amendment affords would allow that or not. Well, as I said, I'm using the existing definition, Mr. Gates. My so question, is, does to, that you is, include the my question to you is, will this you is will you live up to your you anti-communist rhetoric? Will you shift? live up to your anti-communist rhetoric, or is it just a lot of talk from Look, you, Mr. Gates? I, I don't think you have to blow a I hole through the asylum system to a oppose lot of communism. Talk. I guess it's just a lot of talk with you. <laughs> Nothing more than a lot of it's empty all, I talk. I just want to know if the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is included or excluded. How is this so difficult for you? Well, just, Do you have just, any compassion for the people who would have to make this assessment on the border? I just, I just want to know. Would you care for me to read the code section to you? Gladly. <laughs> The existence of a single political party organized on a dictatorial basis with so close an identity between such party and its policies and the government policies of the country in which it exists and the party and the government constitute an indistinguishable unit and the forcible suppression of opposition to such party. That is how the code currently defines would a you, totalitarian would, party would you define Saudi and a Arabia totalitarian dictatorship. Would you define so them that you, way or not, Adam? So if you wanted to know, read the code. But the but question you is not, or not? The it's question your is not whether you can read the code. The question you, you is whether you stand for anything, Mr. To a the question country. is, do you Why stand? Does this you so do much? you stand for anything? Does anything you say mean I, anything I to you? I merely am seeking well, your own you ability really to define so your own soft? amendment. Are you really so soft on communism now, Mr. Gates? I am shocked. Soft on communism? So You're soft, soft on definitions you would within your own you would, bill. You would prosecute. Soft on the basics of you the English prosecute. language. Soft and on the interpretation asylum. statutes. Someone mechanisms by which a border patrol agent really would apply this. Because they won't. You know what? A border patrol Mexico agent isn't going to have this. Mercifully, the eyes. gentleman is out of time. Mercifully, the gentleman is out of time. Okay. Woo. Should we have unanimous consent to no, continue? No, no. Everybody's out of time. Everybody's out of time. <laughs> Does anyone, does anyone seek recognition? He yields back. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this markup, it's about Hunter Biden. It's not about President Trump. I keep hearing my colleagues on the left talk about President Trump and that no one is above the law, and I keep hearing this argument ad infinitum. I guess what they mean is that no one is above the law except for when it comes to President Biden's son, Hunter. And Hunter Biden should not be given special treatment. He defied congressional subpoena and should be treated like others who have done the same, plain and simple. See, Hunter should not be treated with kid gloves. This man is 50 years old, literally. It's a grown ass man. Congressional Democrats 
held Steve Bannon and Peter Navarro contempt of Congress for not complying with congressional subpoenas concerning an investigation to January 6th. Hunter had every right to appear and plead the fifth, and he chose to defy the subpoena when he instead held a self-serving press conference right at the steps of this building. When Democrats issued subpoenas to Republicans during the House January 6th investigation, President Biden said, and I quote, I hope that the committee goes after them and holds them accountable criminally, end quote. Okay, all right. Now let's do Hunter, and that's why we're here. Hunter Biden makes arguments of passion to excuse his behavior. His best defense is often times to make the public feel sorry for him. That's right, we should feel badly for him because he personally enriched himself because of his last name. And again, the left wants us to treat him with kid gloves, and this man is 50 years old. Please, your daddy's saving at this point. It ain't going to work here anymore. He should not be given special treatment because he thinks he's an American prince. And I don't mean purple rain. A witness does not get to decide his preferred method of appearing before the committee. The committee that subpoenaed the witness does. That's how this place works. House committees not in the business of letting witnesses dictate to us the type of, uh, type of depositions or hearings that they want to have. This is not a kangaroo court like President Trump is seeing in the New York trial. It's up to the committees to determine the best methods that will further their investigation, and rather that be through deposition, transcribed interview, or public hearing. This is our job to do that, and Hunter Biden does not get to dictate that to us. And with that, I yield back the rest of my time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's funny because they always try and separate Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. Like, oh, it's his son. It has nothing to do with Joe whatsoever. Let's apply that same playbook to Donald Trump and his sons, Eric and Don Jr. Donald Trump's two sons have been put through the ringer subpoena after subpoena, being investigated by the FBI tirelessly. It seems that's their only mission is to go after the Trump family, even though they have done nothing wrong whatsoever. Hunter Biden, on the other hand, has enriched himself by millions of dollars negotiating matters that this man had no history of being in. So my question is, why is Ukraine so interested on giving this random dude millions of dollars when he has no experience in this matter at hand? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to connect the dots. The only reason Hunter is giving these opportunities is because of his last name and his affiliation with Joe Biden. If one of Trump's sons had the laptop from hell that Hunter had, not only would they be in Guantanamo Bay for the rest of their life, but somehow they would make a correlation with Donald Trump himself, bar him from public office for the rest of his life. It is the clearest double standard I have ever seen in my entire life. This goes against everything that the Founding Fathers fought for. We can't have two tiers of justice in this country. Back in 2016 when Trump won, he gave Hillary Clinton a break. He didn't go after her because he wanted to bring the country together. How did the Democrats repay him in the four years that he left office? They went after him with all the fire and fury that they possibly could muster up. It is absolutely disgraceful. So what Trump should do in this next term is to treat every American equally under the law. I don't care if you're Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton. If you committed a crime, you had an independent prosecutor prove that, then you have to serve your punishment to the fullest extent of the law. Everyone should be treated equally because if this were me or you who committed what Hunter Biden did, we would never see the light of day again in our life. So everyone needs to be treated equally. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this down below what do you think donald trump should do when he gets office once again do you think he should go after these people or should he do what he did in 2016 and let everything go on the basis of keeping us united as a country let me know i'd love to hear that and if you enjoyed make sure to smash that like comment subscribe and wish you guys nothing but the best till next time